we, we talked about the different stages that, you know, you talked about a $1 million EBITDA or a $3 million EBITDA or the, the higher the, the growth is or higher the, the larger the revenue that that thing's thrown off, the, the better the multiple. So if I'm building this up to sell, if I'm building my business to sell, is there a bare minimum? Let's say I'm a, I'm a smaller company. I don't have a bunch of VC backed. I'm not out in technology. Is there a particular minimum number that I want to hit? There's not a minimum number any longer because there's a number of uh, MBA graduates that are coming out that are following what's called a search fund model where they are looking for uh, historically smaller businesses. So these are businesses from maybe 250,000 of EBITDA up to maybe a million-ish, maybe a million and a half on the high end. Hmm. So they've become the buyers of a lot of these. Um, you, you may also be, uh, you may also benefit from a roll-up strategy from a private equity firm as a bolt-on acquisition. You know, they, they might just want to grab up a bunch of them, put them together and, uh, and continue to grow. So I wouldn't say that there's a minimum, but I would say that you need to match up what the proceeds are that you're going to receive to your lifestyle. Because a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to sell my company. I'm going to make $5 million. And they, they don't even realize that they took a pay cut by doing it. <laughs> like if I have a business that makes 500,000 for me every single year, but I only get $5 million after taxes. So let's do, let's do some quick math. If, if we assume zero growth, which I don't believe would happen, but you've got 10 years. If you just straight cash flow that, you've got 10 years of cash left. And especially if you never saved anything along the way while you were making all this, but you're spending every dollar, you're in either, even more of a dire situation. So, you know, in my world, I'm trying to constantly bring together two historically competing worlds, the business and what it needs and the family and what it needs. But yet these two really need to start working in harmony and moving down the path together. They are the same. There is no difference whenever you have a closely held private business. I don't care how large that business is. If it is closely held, family run, family operated, those two worlds collide almost every single day.